Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Makoto Man at YouTube with a, another modeling video. Today I am going to demonstrate using a small 3D printed bed to create a fairly large seamless object in uh, design, printing and construction. Uh, first the design, I've got uh, this one large piece. It has been divided up into 16 components. Uh, appropriately numbered and printed in order. Uh, this item has been sliced manually in AutoCAD. Uh, can work the same for uh, any other uh, software like uh, SketchUp and um, whatnot. So it's been uh, sliced up. It has also been hollowed because it is not a solid object. Uh, each piece has been uh, numbered and printed out so I've got the correct amount of parts being printed. And here are all the components uh, printed out with rafts and supports. I wanted as little overhang as uh, possible so instead of being literally a <coughs> solid block which uh, assembles a bit like this uh, so you can see that I've created a hole in the center there is another layer that's just like this and a dome and uh, it's not possible on a 10 by, uh, 12 by 12 by 12 centimeter bed that I could produce the one solid object like that as well it'll probably take about two straight days to print and have all sorts of issues so you can see for minimum warpage instead of being a solid block it have been uh, turned into thin walls uh, either in a uh, rectangular manner or a round manner now the reason why I've done that is it's a lot more structurally strong. If you look at uh, my video on thickness and fill, large blocks seem to be uh, quite weak because uh, the fill is not very uh, supportive and you're working on the walls. The more corners and walls you have, the stronger the print. So these pieces are insanely strong opposed to if we just have a large solid block. It is a lot lighter, it uses a lot less plastic and it prints a lot quicker because it's just generally less mass and the best thing is once I built it up into the tower it's meant to be I can apply uh, glue or putty or any sort of other product inside to strengthen and reinforce it. Uh, the process is going to be is I'm going to remove everything off the supports and rafts, sand the edges and super glue them together. Once each component is super glued the seams are going to be filled with automotive polyester putty and everything covered in just uh, blade or bog putty. Once sanded back from uh, sandpaper grit from 120 all the way down to 300-400, we're going to hit it with uh, automotive spray putty, have a look at it, re-putty, re-sand, and we have a finished object ready for painting. So, let's see what's next. I shall be demonstrating the uh, cleaning up and gluing and pinning these two components together as there's no internal pieces they just stick together as uh, some sort of bunker like wall the raft and it's uh, fairly simple just with a um, scraping tool just want to put the corner underneath the lip and just pry open uh, this is getting a bit old I've actually got a new one so it's going to be a bit so I have removed it um, you need a flat surface to do it efficiently a bit hard to do it three hand and I've got two components we can have a really good look there is a seam if I glue them together scale modelers will know how to handle this and for a scale model job it is a pretty bad seam so what I'm going to do you sand down both uh, surfaces, it's a bit more flush, the seam will be a bit more tighter and then we pin. Sanding is quite easy, I'm using a nail file, it's got a, quite a high grit, uh, probably something similar to 120, uh, the rear side's probably about 300 and it's just going flat and sanding it down, there's a bit of raised detail where the printer has gone a bit off, probably half a mil out or whatnot. And we're going to sand it until it is really uh, smooth to the touch. I'm only going to sand with the rough end. It doesn't have to be smooth because there's a bit of uh, grip from the scratching of the sanding for the super glue to adhere to instead of just a perfectly smooth surface. And already it's feeling a lot better 
with just that little amount of sanding. Uh, a bit more, I'm going to call it done. I'm also going to glue this bit, the bottom bit, into a lip of a platform. So it's going to be about oh, that high. And uh, that's just got a lot of contact, so that's uh, super glue. Since uh, this is quite a small surface and it could actually quite snap, that's the reason why we're going to pin. Okay, so sanded, the seam's a lot smaller, almost non-existent with a white background. What we're going to do is mark the two points. I plan on having my pins. And they only have to be ever so roughly placed, not exact, because one's going to be a small hole and the pin's going to go through. The second's going to be a larger hole, so it's going to be slightly loosish. And that way we can have um, some structural support. Now, pin vice you can buy online or an electrical or hobby shop pretty cheap. Just need to uh, make a course or a hole with a hobby knife at the two points you're drilling. So you're not drilling into nothing, slipping and moving. I've got an easy click uh, pin vise uh, made by Wave. And you just drill through. Uh, if you type in pin vising on my YouTube channel, you'll see uh, reviews and tutorials on what's a good pin vise, what's a bad pin vise and what not. It's a very popular method for um, resin modelling. Uh, make sure that you drill in, drill out, only a little bit of pressure, not too much. Don't force anything. Um, I don't use anything more um, under a mil in um, diameter because they just snap easily. And you just take your time and drill it in. Now I've just cut some 1.5 mil wire. It's just stainless steel. Um, very very cheap. Slots in and out. Just a tiny bit of super glue in the hole. And you push her in. And that should uh, stay in place. Now I've drilled holes on the other side. The holes are significantly bigger, so there's space to move around, and it can jiggle, and line up absolutely perfectly. So all we have to do is put a few drops of super glue around, clamp it together, put it on a flat surface, and make sure it's really, really well aligned, and allow it to dry. Okay, so it's glued together, not too bad. What we're going to do is just to fill the seam more and to get it stronger just run a bit of super glue all around the seam and that way it should be a bit stronger now for that seam we have two putties first we've got the septone uh, car filler this is a polyester putty you ask for polyester putty in the smallest amount possible it's two part inside this lid there is the hardener and inside it is the putty uh, the putty is about white in colour mix of hardener it turns a bit red and this is good for seams and large pits that are a couple of mil in diameter you have to do a really good job mixing it. If you don't mix it, it does not dry. It stays in a putty state. It ruins your mold. You have to scrape it off and add it. So uh, I'll demonstrate uh, after this uh, segment how to uh, mix it correctly. Uh, small batches are the best. Never mix large batches because things just go terribly wrong. I've had uh, mishaps currently. Blade putty to the right is a pre-mixed putty and you just apply on. It can't really build up any more than 3 mil thick, which is pretty thick, but it's good for applying thinly. It's a very uh, hard putty as well, and it's just good for uh, covering the uh, texture of a 3D printed model, where the polyester is good with dealing with the terrible, terrible seams. Now both of these are uh, resin based in some nature, this is definitely um, a true resin, this is a bit pre-mixed and a bit funny, the vapours are terrible, the dust is terrible, 
wear an organic dust respirator when dealing with this. Uh, when you're opening it, you'll need an organic um, vapor respirator. Just get a vapor respirator like so, and that should protect your lungs when dealing with stuff uh, this nasty. All the experimenting I've done with um, sanding and treating 3D printed uh, parts for texture, uh, this combination has been the cheapest and quickest to dry. Uh, mix correctly, this stuff will dry within 40 minutes. Same with that stuff ready to sand. I normally allow a few hours to 24 hours before sanding just to allow maximum hardening and whatnot. So I just carry on with something else. Being a big build, uh, we won't be able to sand everything within a 24 hour period. So I've just helped myself at some putty. Uh, the mixing rate is meant to be 50 to 1. So using the hardener, which is a tiny tube, i am literally only got a tiny pinch to this amount, which is probably a bit too much. And the idea is we keep mixing until we get a lovely, consistent red-brown. If it starts to clump, it means it's drying too quickly. It's no good for application. It's quite smooth. That's a good colour actually. It's quite smooth and a colour like this. It's okay for application. And you've got to make sure that you mix quite deep and it's a consistent colour all the way through. And with our part here, we just, shoot, um, just run it down the seam and blend it out. Once you apply it nice and thick, then you can sort of just uh, fan it out a bit. Making sure it looks quite smooth. And here we go is the finished result where we've got uh, a covered seam all the way around. Within 20 minutes, it's hard to the touch. Not ready to sand, but definitely to do some further work. I've got my pre-mixed um, bog putty right here. And using a cotton swab Q-tip, it's uh, a very, very easy process. All we're doing is uh, just smoothing it out against the grain. covering um, as much um, of the surface as we humanly can. Now as uh, this does take about 20 to 40 minutes to uh, dry, I'm only going to cover half of it, put it on some newspaper, let it dry and then um, cover the other half in putty so I don't get it any on my hands and I don't have to do anything uh, funny. So, just keep doing it till you can't really see the lines too much. I'm uh, going to dry, sand back, uh, prime, have a look, and it may need a second round. But uh, it's a fairly soft product. It sands very, very easily. You just need to wear a respirator while sanding, and of course, application. Uh, the smell is quite strong. Do it in a well ventilated area outside or in a shed or area that's just away from uh, general living quarters. And um, that's all there really is uh, to it once it's all completely covered. Now this is dried over uh, a few days so I haven't had a chance to work on it and uh, the pink is the bog and where there's the extra build up is the polyester putty. Uh, to make sure that you've done it correctly, run and dig your fingernail across the polyester putty. If it uh, doesn't dig in and feel soft and puttery, you have done it right. If, um, oh, you have not done it right. If it leaves no mark, you've done it correctly. It's ready for sanding. If it's still quite soft, uh, it's never going to harden. So you need to get like a scraper and some sandpaper, remove it and try again. 
uh, to remember to get it to a uh, bright pink consistency just like the pre-mixed bog. So what I'm going to do, and I'm not too afraid of texture, I've got 80 grit sandpaper, I'm going to buff it up and make it flat, move down to 120 grit sandpaper, ram it straight down to uh, bare plastic, uh, scruff and wet sand it, then wet sand it with about 300 grit sandpaper, and then I'm going to hit it with uh, spray uh, primer uh, to capture all the scratches that I made with the harsh sandpaper as well as look for further errors. It's important to get it down flat after all the build up of putty and misalignments of the parts. So it's just simple of folding a piece in half and uh, sanding down. It uh, does clog the um, sandpaper quite significantly so you will literally need to buy about um, half a dozen or so high grit sandpapers. The low grit sandpapers do not affect too much and um, it's just a matter of sitting back, listening to some music or the radio and just sanding. Remember that uh, this is all uh, fairly uh, toxic, it's uh, all resin based, wear a respirator, uh, wet sand for the whole process if you're concerned about inside and dust and whatnot. If you get dust all over the place, uh, resin clumps together under uh, water. So just uh, cracking out some water and putting my finger in it, it just collects perfectly and then you can just wipe it up and there's no um, damage. If r resin dust gets everywhere, just get a spray bottle, spray it for water or clump into something and it can be cleaned up very, very safely. Now you can see that all I've really focused is on the seam, that the uh, polyester seam is sanded back down flat. Uh, the rest of the bog is still fairly lumpy and any heavy buildup of uh, putty is removed. That's the only uh, purpose is roughly flattening with the 80 grit. The 120 grit, however, I'm going to use to majority remove as much putty as I can. Now, as 3D printing does it in an x-axis, if you sand in this direction, right to left, it's going to eat into the grooves where you have your soft polyester putty and bring back some of the old lines. Uh, do your best to try to go against the uh, x-axis uh, grain and that way you're actually digging into the material and not the putty and you'll have less cleanup to do in the second round of putty work. Some areas obviously it's not going to be uh, possible. It could always be uh, re-puttied with a much lighter coat and sanded down with a lot more finer um, paper. Though, in the end, we generally want to do as little work as humanly possible. So, like that. And I'll show you at what stage you want it to be done. So, sanding back with 120 grit, we can actually start seeing the plastic. I'm going to hit it with uh, wet 120 and then wet 300 grit. It'll be ready for spray primer. Now this is completely wet sanded with the 120 and 300 grit sandpaper. You can see how it's marbled. You can see how there's a concentrate um, in the lines. That's where texture would have appeared if we just uh, painted or left it untreated. You can see where it's raised and uh, lowered, where it's been mismatched. And uh, where there's warpage, there's just a heavy amount of putty. And now we've got a fairly smooth surface. I'm going to use this, this is uh, color filler, uh, primer filler. When you do putty work, you sand it back, and you have a smooth finish like this, you'd, you'd apply this putty, which is uh, a spray primer, and what it does is it just primes your piece, but as well as it primes your piece, if there's fine scratches left by the sandpaper or tiny dents or whatever, this stuff will fill it. I'll uh, demonstrate the use of it outside on uh, this piece, but uh, all of my pieces have generally been used with this stuff. Being a rattle can, normal rattle can rules apply, you can heat it up in uh, post boiled water. Uh, you do need to shake it for a significant amount of time to mix the um, gases inside with the paint and whatnot, and you'll have a nice even coat and get the maximum amount of paint out for the propellant that's inside. So we're outside. And we've got um, the can 
sufficiently uh, rattle. And with the respirator and being outside and all, we spray. Left to right, sweeps 30 centimeters away from the piece. And you just slowly build up. Because it's not paint, it doesn't matter if it goes on a bit too thick, it is uh, thick to the consistency of uh, putty, so if it does dribble or droop or whatever, it's going to be sanded back anyway. And you just keep spraying and applying on the surface until you don't see any pits, holes, everything just comes out quite smooth and dandy. And it comes out a bit like this. So with the spray putty applied, we can see that it's quite smooth and in piece in one piece. So a lot of the texture is removed. If you look closer, there's still quite a bit of scuffing marks left over from the heavy sanding. Um, a couple of small holes that the putty's missed, a few indents, and just more um, mistakes from spray painting or sandpaper scuffing. So what I'm going to do is apply just a bit more bog onto it and then we're going to sand it back dry and wet with uh, 300 grit sandpaper and higher until it's a nice polished finish and then we'll know for a fact that it's absolutely done ready for painting. As you can see the putty has not been applied anywhere near as heavy as uh, when we went for the first time because we're not contouring the shape. Once compared you can see that it's just a continuous piece and not so much all uh, lumpy and overridden. With everything sanded back to almost bare plastic everything's marbled. This is what the finished piece looks like. We'll hit it with a bit of primer and she is 100% finished. So this is a much larger item and it's made up of tall parts. What I've done is I've sliced in three ways in levels and put it together in levels such as a building. Once assembled the fit is not perfect and it's not 100% flush so it's super glued together and each level has been sanded sufficiently to be assembled as flush as humanly possible to keep its structural integrity. And even though there are slight gaps, they're going to be super glued together, reinforced, and polyester putty will be applied as per the smaller piece around the joints. I've also put two magnets to be joined to another um, component, which is also being 3D printed. And the actual sinks for the magnets to go in were pre catted in and printed as is. So uh, that required very little work and it's uh, there exactly where it needs to be to uh, the millimetre. Now, unfortunately with printing, parts can distort, they can lift up and there could be some issues. And unfortunately I did come across a couple of issues. It's the nature of my particular um, 3D printer, not too bad. I've got a 1-2mm to two mil gap uh, there as well in the back and the glue is just not sticking. And this was a particularly embarrassingly bad uh, lift job. Uh, I chose not to throw the part out because I could just uh, putty it up. And what I will be using is Milliput. I've uh, demonstrated Milliput many times in this YouTube channel. It's uh, a plumbing epoxy putty. Uh, you cut 
two equal parts you just keep mixing it until it's a consistent color and all you have to do is just push it in the holes and conform it around takes about 24 hours to dry absolutely wonderful uh, once the other putties have been applied and sanded back you will not even notice that there was ever a error so I mix some Millie putt together and it's almost like a, a blue tack like consistency all you have to do is push it up against the hole and just smooth it in until it just covers everything and it's uh, pretty level and here you go the gaps are filled not perfectly still a bit of a sink uh, that's what the polyester putty will do as per the smaller piece that we demonstrated it will cover all the seams cover it in bog and then all that's required is sanding back and some spray putty to see for any further imperfections uh, next we'll look at it when it's uh, covered in putty then when it's done polyester putty applied now take note how thickly it's been done so it's overlapping where parts misalign as well as well over the seam to accommodate for shrinkage and material removal until it goes back down to its flat surface here is the large component now you can see from the very big build up of the seams with the polyester putty and the rest of the surface covered in bog uh, this is going to be very hard to clean up so I'm just going to spray primer into it and uh, sand it back see how we go with all of that sanding we hit it dry with 120 wet 120 then uh, wet 300 and you can see where it did misalign and where there's gaps and you knew there was a big gap there and I put uh, milliput the round areas that uh, have deeper marks than the flat areas major misalignment and when this is uh, going to be spray primer puttied there's just going to be a few blotches and holes and scratch will be left with the second uh, primer or oh, sorry, second round of putty and then finished. Now, I have to admit, with the spray primer from afar, it looks amazing. It looks one piece. Close up, the inner holes has its uh, texture. We we'll use uh, sanding to get rid of it. And if you look really closely, uh, you can see the block still slightly misaligned. A couple of seams, a couple of really, really fine pits and whatnot. And that's nothing that a second uh, round of uh, putty and sanding cannot fix. Though from raw 3D printed plastic and heavily misaligned parts to this is excellent. And it was uh, over a very short period of time. We shall repeat the process and review again. So after a second round of um, putty and primer work. This was sanded down with 120 grit sandpaper until the surface was flat and there was no raised sections from the putty. It was then wet sanded with the 120, wet sanded with 240 and then 300 grit sandpaper until it achieves quite a smooth surface. After the last round of uh, spray putty, it should be more or less finished. There may be a tiny split scene or one or two little holes here and there. Uh, they can be just uh, filled in a very light coat of uh, putty, which can be sanded back with 300 dried and 300 wet. And just only a tiny touch of uh, primer to see that it has been eliminated. So it could uh, be put aside and ready for uh, final assembly, detailing, panel lining, final putty or primer and painting. We will put the spray putty on and we'll have a look drawing closer to the end of this video. And here we go, the finished results. I am probably going to do a couple more touch-ups, very very small, not noticeable, detail with styrene plates, uh, some panels before it gets painted. But this is the structure of many many components to build up a large piece that cannot fit on my 3D printer bed. We know this is was in half and there's just no evidence of the seam line, misalignment or anything. This has had a few, about three passes. 
This piece has had two parts. I'm going to do a third one, but I'm just a bit impatient about getting this uh, video finished and not doing more. Uh, you can't see the seams. You can't see the hidden magnets. As so. And it's uh, a bit time consuming. Though, if you want um, just a normal matte finish, as is, good enough. A few tiny pits, they won't be seen. A high gloss, shiny showroom car finish. Uh, one more round of putty. Uh, one more very thick uh, coat of uh, primer putty. And you just sand back uh, for 300 grit, 400 grit, 1000 grit, 2000 grit. Nice and polished, probably a bit of buff. Another round of primer, another round of uh, polishing. And it will be beautiful people would not even recognize or understand that it's uh, come out of uh, a 3d printer I think with 3d printing there's the obsession of the expensive printer expensive spools trying to make it as pretty as possible out of a print without any post-production work such as uh, sanding putting whatever as scale modelers we don't care as much we've worked with manky kits we've worked with kits with seam lines and bad jobs and just rebuilding things a tool that creates custom shapes for us is just infinitely cool and using what we already know we've uh, got that edge and we can produce some lovely and uh, beautiful work even though we're just looking at a glorified cylinder right now now as I work on my next component large piece I got some notes for printing I've printed stuff that's about half the volume of the print bed so whatever the dimensions are, half or less, uh, thick wall, solid honeycomb, and it's beautiful. I tried printing a piece that is about two times bigger, and it gave me some problems. Uh, the print quality is a little uh, worse for wear, even though it is uh, more of a curved surface. And um, I used less fill because it was quite heavy and I was worried about uh, these plastic. I'm running out of pla plastic on this project. Though the uh, shape was very, very basic. I had a lot more trouble printing larger components. It was uh, quite tricky. And it's uh, slightly uh, misformed. Even though an expensive plastic, uh, there's uh, holes and it's uh, warpage and all sorts of things. A bit of glue and reinforced putty. It's not going to be a problem. I'll get this quite beautiful. Uh, but even though these, doing it smaller, produces more seam lines and uses more plastic, it's actually less work than doing something bigger with less seam lines. Um, I've also found that uh, layering it as I did, notating, putting what number piece so they go together in order and if they're bottom or top, uh, where's the top of the piece, where's the back of the piece is very very helpful in assembly because after a while even though you cut it and drawed the item uh, you will not uh, recognize the piece from the entirety of the build even if you got a picture of the full build all in all thank you very much for watching as always until next time I hope this video was uh, helpful uh, something completely different from what anybody else is really doing if you got any comments interesting queries uh, any suggestions that um, might improve uh, scale modeling and 3d printing I'm willing to listen to ideas and attempt it since, um, hey, we've got the gear to do it. Catch you guys later.